Welcome to the Delta College STEM Explorer High School Introduction to Engineering and Computer Aided Design Project, or what we like to call CAD. We are so happy that you decided to join us this year. My name is Nathan Elder, STEM Explorer Coordinator at Delta College. Delta College is one of the premier community colleges in the entire country. And since 2016 in the STEM Explorer program, we have worked with tens of thousands of middle school, high school students, as well as community members promoting STEM in education. But we're not only concerned with STEM in education, we're also concerned with STEM careers, especially right here in the Great Lakes Bay region, where hundreds of jobs each year go unfilled because of the lack of qualified applicants. Well, Delta College and the STEM Explorer program is seeking to solve that problem. So you're in high school, and before you know it, you'll be making decisions about your future. We hope that you make Delta College part of your future plans. One of the things you can pursue at Delta College is a CAD certification. Uh, Most of our students that come in and get a CAD certification actually are out of here within a year with that certification and working uh, in CAD related careers. And that's something you're going to be doing in this project. Maybe you're concerned with taking or maybe you'd like to take that one step further and become a full fledged engineer. But did you know that you don't have to get accepted to a prestigious four-year college or university right out of high school to become an engineer? You can actually start right at a community college such as Delta College. We offer a two-year pre-engineering program. You can actually get a a job in engineering right uh, after graduating with this associate's degree in some places. Or... You may choose to turn that into a four-year degree by transferring to uh, another college or university. You can even get a master's degree in engineering. So we have all kinds of options for you, and that is one of the reasons why we are one of the top community colleges in the country. So this project is about giving you a taste of what it's like to be an engineer. You'll do actual engineering in this project. So the question is, What is engineering? Let's talk about that for a few minutes. So engineering can be boiled down to basically two things. Number one, designing a solution to a current problem. Or number two, improving upon something that has already been designed. So let's consider transportation. How about race cars? So engineering has taken us from race cars that look like this to race cars that look like this. There are certainly many improvements from the first to the second. The second is one of my favorite cars, a 2020 Ford GT. Consider communication. Engineering has taken us from telephones that look like this Maybe your great-great-grandparents had phones like this hanging on their walls. Two phones that look like this and do an awful lot more (laughs) than the first one. Well, how do engineers think and what do engineers do? Engineers follow what's called the engineering cycle. If they're going to solve a problem or improve upon something that already exists, they need to follow this engineering cycle. And it usually starts with asking a question. What is the problem? Well, maybe the problem is we need a better form of transportation. You think back over a hundred years ago when they're moving around in horse and buggies and not being able to go very far, very fast, that that was quite limiting. So that was the problem that they were trying to solve. So some very bright people started imagining some solutions. And that's what engineers do. If you're a creative, outside-of-the-box thinker, maybe engineering is for you. So you think of all these possible solutions and then you make plans. Usually these plans involve making some drawings, writing something down, making a list of materials, things that you would need. Sometimes your plans sound crazy and impossible, and sometimes they are impossible, but sometimes they're not. Then you work to create those plans. You follow your plan and you test it out. Then you evaluate your plan. How did that work? What worked and what didn't? 
And of course, that's a question that leads you back to imagining some other solutions to make your original solution even better. There are lots of engineers uh, in the United States. 4.9% of our workforce works in some form of engineering. There are over 300,000 mechanical engineers, uh, just under 3,000 electrical engineers, uh, over 200,000 civil engineers, and just under 100,000 aerospace engineers. But even though we have that many people working in the field, there's room for many, many more. Here on the STEM Explorer, we have done quite a bit of engineering over the last five years. And one of our favorite projects was designing a video game arcade cabinet. So I'm gonna show you our video game arcade cabinet, talk a little bit about it. Here is the first one. This is 3D printed entirely in one piece. It has an HDMI screen. It has a joystick, a digital joystick, as well as four buttons here on the top, a start and select button at the top here, and a button on the left side and a button on the right side, as well as some USB controls. I'll turn this around. It is powered by a Raspberry Pi 3B computer. It's about the size of a deck of cards. And notice there are a lot of wires in there. So my assistant Peter had to do a lot of electrical engineering here and computer engineering to get this going. And that is outside my realm, but I designed the actual cabinet. So it works very well. We took this and tested it with thousands of middle school students over the course of an entire year. And while the students were playing the games and we use, and this is used to play like old school video games, things from like Atari to Nintendo and Sega games from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, even some games from the early 2000s that we'll play. But we watched the students play them and we saw some of the difficulties that they were having like navigating menus or actually noticing that some of the games were difficult to play because of the button layout and whatnot. And we learned some things over the course of that year. And what we learned, we applied to a second prototype because we were following the engineering cycle. So let me show you the second prototype. We're really proud of this. We took about six months to not only design this, but to get it, get it working. You'll notice some things right away that are different about this prototype than the first one. It's, well, it's a lot more detailed. Notice the big screen. This screen is twice as large as the other one. And not only is it larger, but it's also a lot brighter and you can see things better, a lot more color, a lot better color rendition. And the most important thing with this screen is you can actually view it from uh, all kinds of angles instead of having to look straight on. The original screen, you had to be right in front of that thing in order to see it. Otherwise, it was really difficult to see and it wasn't very bright. But this one's much better kind of like a modern day TV. Uh, the buttons, there are no buttons on the top and we can get to that in a minute as to why we did that. We put the start and select buttons here. There is a volume knob, which is something that the other one did not have. The students had no control over the volume of the game they were playing before. And speaking of sound, uh, the original one I didn't show you, but it has a speaker coming out the bottom and it's just a mono speaker. Here we have stereo system. So you get that left and right audio sound. You'll notice that there is a D-pad as well as two analog sticks. Analog sticks are uh, functional for most of our modern games from, from the PlayStation 2 or the Nintendo 64 onward. They had analog sticks. And you really can't play those a lot of those games without analog sticks. So now we have that capability that we didn't have before. And this is something that the other one did not have. It's a trackpad, something like you would see on a laptop computer. And this allows you to play many PC games that you wouldn't be able to play on the first prototype. So uh, we also have a lot more buttons, as we showed. We have buttons on the left-hand side and buttons on the right-hand side. And that pretty much allows you to play any kind of game that you could play with a standard 
controller, whether it be a PlayStation 2 controller or a PlayStation 4 controller like this one or um, anything else with uh, all these analog sticks and buttons. So uh, we hope to test this one out. We tested a little bit uh, at the end of last year, but we hope to test this out with more students and find out where its shortcomings are because it's not perfect. The engineering cycle never ends. The engineering cycle just keeps on going. Imagine cars for a minute. Uh, cars have changed, you know, cars from the 1920s to 30s to 40s to 50s, all the way to cars in 2020 and they're they function you know cars work from the 1960s but imagine all the things that have changed from cars from those decades to today uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that this was 3d printed in multiple pieces I had forgotten to tell you about that that's really important because manufacturing is an ex a very expensive part of uh, engineering uh, if you were if you were thinking about selling one of these cabinets and mass marketing it and trying to sell you know a hundred thousand of them you'd want to keep your costs down as much as possible and it takes a lot of time to reach in here and connect all these wires and whatnot and there are better ways to do this on a mass scale but you have to be able to get your hands in here and with this other cabinet it was a lot smaller it was a lot more difficult to get our hands in there. It was all printed in one piece, so we really didn't have an option other than just to reach our hands inside there to put everything together. This one is designed in about six pieces, and most importantly, the top comes off. And when we can take the top off, we can get our hands inside to work uh, in the components and to put them together. So we're really proud of our engineering there, but you know, there are probably better arcade cabinets and we can improve upon this one. All right, well, speaking of video games and video game controllers, we want to discuss what this actual project is about because you're going to be designing a video game controller. So here is a PlayStation 4 controller. Here is a, this happens to be an Xbox 360 controller. Lots of different buttons. And these game controllers are designed for people with two hands but that's not the case with everyone so in this project you're gonna be designing a one-handed video game controller this is a standards driven online or in-person or hybrid high school stem project and we are in a situation right now where maybe you'll be working at home or maybe you'll be working at school either way you can do this project. So we'll be talking about in the next few minutes a basic project description. We'll discuss briefly the standards that are addressed in the project. I'll give you a brief project overview and a general timeline so you know how long the project will take. We'll talk about technology requirements because that's very important for doing anything like this. And then we'll discuss support. We won't really discuss how much it costs or how to get involved because you're already involved. This is Jared Bullock. Jared Bullock is a fitness buff, and he's also a disabled combat veteran. You'll notice that Jared has lost his right arm and his right leg, and this is a physical disability. Now, he's done a lot to overcome these physical disabilities, but he can't overcome the fact that he still just has one hand. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you design uh, using a program called Onshape. This is a free for education professional CAD program. We're gonna have you design a full featured video game controller that would allow someone like Jared with only one hand to participate without any disadvantages. You see, the demographic for uh, people who play video games is uh, definitely skewed towards the 18 to 35 crowd, but that demographic is also the same demographic of people who go into the military and go to war for us. So we've been at war for a number of years and we have a lot of people that are disabled. So we wanna create something that would help them. 
As I mentioned before, this is definitely a standards-driven project. These are things that you are really supposed to learn in high school science. These are engineering standards. The first one is ETS-1-2. It's design a solution to a complex real-world problem by breaking it down into smaller, more manageable problems that can be solved through engineering. And this is definitely a problem you'll be solving through engineering. And then the next standard has to do with evaluating a solution to a complex problem. So you'll have a number of groups of students in your class that are doing this project and yours, your solution to the problem will be much different than another group's solution to a problem and you can compare those solutions and look at the strengths and weaknesses of both. And you'll definitely want to think about things like uh, cost and safety and reliability, aesthetics, as well as possible social, cultural and environmental impacts. Not only do we cover a lot of the Michigan science standards or the next generation science standards, but also uh, some national technology standards for 2020. And there are so many of these we actually covered in this project that we won't really even discuss them in full detail, but you can check them out at ISTE.org. This is a 3D printer. It's actually the same 3D printer we use on the Delta College STEM Explorer. And this is what we will use to 3D print your prototypes. So the basic pro project overview is as follows. The introduction is today. So you're being introduced to the project today by video. Then, then you'll move on to the Onshape training. Onshape is the CAD program that all the students will be using in this project. It could take as little as five days or your teacher could extend it to 10 days or more, just depends on how much time you'd like to spend on the project. But this is a series of tutorials that has been created by my assistant, Peter. Uh, and they teach you all the basics that you need to know for, uh, for creating prototype parts in Onshape. Then your team will actually work together to create the prototypes. And here's one of the cool things about Onshape. If you're working at home, for instance, which many students will be, you can still collaborate on this project. If you have a, a group of three or four students working on the same prototype, you can actually work on it at the same time and make changes to the prototype and work through it. And it is a true collaborative effort. When the prototype is complete, you'll actually share it with the STEM Explorer team. And we will uh, make sure it's ready for 3D printing and we will 3D print it here on the STEM Explorer or in our, at our other 3D printer inside the college. That will take a little while, depending on how many prototypes we have to print generally about two weeks. So we will 3D print the prototypes and then we'll provide them to you. So we will send the prototypes to your school and your teacher will distribute them um, however is best to distribute them. Depends on if you're at school or if you're at home. Then you will test them out and you will present those prototypes uh, designs to your peers. So for technology, we have a lot of flexibility with technology in this project. Onshape is online, which is really, really nice. It's web-based and it's free for educational use, <laughs> uh, it, but it is a professional 3D application. So it'll do all the same things that the really, really expensive ones will do. And as a matter of fact, Onshape would be very expensive if you had to do it or if you had to pay for it. But since you're in education, it is free. So notice uh, you can use Windows machines, Mac, Androids, or uh, iOS devices, uh, even Chromebooks to do this project. The STEM Explorer program does have a loaner program for schools who uh, need computers for this project. And the STEM Explorer team will be here to assist you in the project. We will provide on-site support if we're allowed to do so, uh, coming out to the school and working with your, uh, with your groups of students on the project. Or we will provide weekly live online support during our virtual office hours and we'll try to be available when you are working on this project. And of course we have the Onshape tutorials which are always very very helpful to go back into uh, to help you with the project. So just a couple more things about this project. Again this is a PlayStation 4 controller. We talked about it being designed for someone with two hands and notice there are buttons that are designed to be pushed by your index finger your middle finger, uh, it even has a place for your thumb up here and the two analog sticks and all the buttons on this side and this side. But we have to create something that can be handled in one hand. 
Uh, it's not fair for someone to be playing a game that requires two analog sticks when they can't reach them both with uh, their one hand if they have a disability. So somehow we've got to get all the functionality of this into something that can fit in one hand. Now, we're not actually going to create all of the internal electronics of the controller, and we won't be testing it with actual video games. That involves, that's far more involved than what we'll be doing in this project, but you will be creating the physical design, and you will be able to show how you can hold it in one hand and how you can reach the various controls, and you'll want to show that you can replicate something like this so it could be created for someone with a disability so we are very excited for you to be part of this project this year and this is the first time we've ever done this project so we're we're really excited to find out what kinds of interesting creative designs and solutions that you come up with because we believe you've got great potential so uh, we are here to help you uh, we will be of assistance to you in any way we can and again we're very excited that you decided to join us in this project this year and we can't wait to see the results best of luck to you